Well, I'm teaching a course at the law school, University of Chicago, for the winter quarter. And it's called, you'll see from the title, it's kind of a combination of two topics. It's called Negotiating International Agreements, colon, the case of climate change. And the idea was to sort of talk generically about uh, the process of negotiating international agreements and then talk more specifically about the history and the content of the climate change regime that we've negotiated over the years. So we're taking this broad historical look at these negotiations. We'll do a lot of assignments where we put ourselves in the position of a negotiator, try to ascertain what our interests are, uh, what the best negotiating stance would be. There's a lot of uh, game playing where you put yourself in a position that you ordinarily wouldn't consider. I'll give you one example of an assignment that the students just had and did a remarkably good job on. So I asked the students to pretend that they were the lawyers, you know, working on this Kyoto Protocol and to write a memo to the chief negotiator with ideas for how you might rationalize these two uh, seemingly inconsistent points of view. So it was a real world exercise and so I wanted to give them a flavor of how not only a real world issue, but the interaction between an international process and what's going on at home. And they came up with ideas that, you know, we didn't come up with at the time. And I was, uh, you know, extremely impressed by their creativity. I think going forward, some of the biggest impacts uh, that she'll have on, on my career just is my approach to problem solving. and. I think her position is, and something that's rubbed off on me, is that there's always a creative or uh, unique way to work through those types of problems. And there's no reason to necessarily give up just because seem, things seem to be at a crossroads. There's usually a way to, to, I think, bind different interests together for an acceptable solution. Well, I set out a bunch of objectives at the beginning of the course and um, you know one of them relates to just learning about the process of negotiation and I call that kind of the front end. Uh, I also want them to be able to look at an agreement that's already been done which I call the, you know, the back end right to be able to analyze closely a legal text. I'm kind of using the experience of the climate negotiations as the vehicle for talking about uh, the process more generally. To talk directly to someone who was directly responsible for a lot of those details is absolutely incredible. Um, and to see her perspective on kind of the U.S.'s goals, other countries' goals, and, and how those came together to, to create what we're looking at um, is just an a, a incredibly unique, in-depth way of, of learning about the regime. Anytime you have the opportunity to work from someone as experienced and uh, renowned as Sue, it, it's, it's really something special. I, I think Sue has an ability to tell different anecdotes that is, it's really quite enjoyable. It makes the class fun to be in because you're with someone that was actually there. Um, and there's a real life to the way she tells those sorts of stories that I think makes it easier to ultimately understand the material as well. The class has been a very uh, front and center demonstration of like, oh, this is what this looks like on the ground floor in practice. I kind of had this flash of insight. I'm like, oh, this is, uh, this is very much where I want to be headed. Just a, a, a really exciting way to, to see what negotiating these agreements looks like uh, out there, uh, outside of the, uh, the ivory tower. <laughs>